What does working out really mean? Work is done on something when a force causes that something to move. So muscles do work moving bodies or weight certain distances. The heavier the weight, or the greater the distance it travels, the more work is done. To do work in a mechanical system, two things are needed. One is force. The other is movement while that force is applied. The movement is the distance. So to measure the amount of work being done, say, by a machine, you multiply the force it exerts by the distance the object moves. If there's force, but nothing moves over a distance while that force is applied, no work is done. Watch this scene and see if you can tell when work is being done. What you've just seen is work being done in a mechanical system. When the barbell was lifted, force was applied in an upward direction. But work was not being done the whole time. To do work, you need both force and distance over which the object moved. So work was only done when the barbell was moving, not when it stopped at his chest and over his head. Now watch the robot. The same thing is true for machines. Work is only done when the object is moved by force. You need both to do work. When the robot stops moving, it's not working even though it still exerts force. No matter how long an object is held in the air, no matter how much force is exerted, no mechanical work is done until that object moves a distance. you try telling the weightlifter that. The definition of work as force times distance is easier to remember if you think of the units of work, the foot-pound or the newton meter. Pounds and newtons are units of force. While feet and meters are units of distance. So force times distance is work. For example, to find the work done by the winch lifting this elevator, multiply the pounds of force needed to lift it by the number of feet it travels when that force is applied. Feet times pounds is foot-pounds of work. Measuring the force in newtons, and the distance in meters does the same thing in metric. Notice that time is not part of this formula. So the work done on the elevator, lifting it from the ground to the top of the building, is the same whether it's done in one move or whether it stops at every floor represented by these dots. The only time the amount of work changes is if the weight changes when people get on and off, because then more force is needed to move it. We constantly hear about efficiency of machines, but what does that really mean? Efficiency is a comparison of what we get out of a machine over what we put into it to make it run. The difference between the amount of work put into a system and the amount of work you get out tells you how much work is being wasted in the system itself. In this case, the person is pulling on a line, exerting a force, and moving it over a distance, so work is being done. At the same time, the pulley system does work on the drum, but the distance the drum moves is shorter. So does that mean the amount of work is less? No, because the hands exert a smaller force over a long distance, while the pulley exerts a greater force over a shorter distance. So the amount of work is the same. Well, almost the same. If the work in equaled the work out, the machine would be 100% efficient. In reality, no machine has ever been invented that's perfectly efficient. But by measuring the difference between the work in and the work out, you can see how close to 100% efficient your machine is. So far, we've only been talking about work being done to move objects in a straight line. But many mechanical systems move objects in a circle or rotate a shaft. The formula is basically the same. 
except that the force needed to rotate an object is torque, and the distance is measured in angles. In short form, that's T times theta. T for torque is the force. Theta, the angle, is the distance. Measuring theta, or the angular distance in a rotating system, can be done in two ways. For example, this drive mechanism creates torque to rotate the Ferris wheel. If we want to measure how far the Ferris wheel rotates in a given time, we measure theta, the angle from the center. This angle could be expressed in degrees. Another way to do the same thing is to measure radians, usually called rads. A radian is a larger angle than a degree, so there are fewer of them in a circle. That makes them easier to count. A rad exists when the distance from the center of the circle to the outside, or the radius, is the same as the distance around the outside of the circle between two radii, or this distance here. Whether you measure distance in radians, angles, feet, or meters, when you multiply that distance by the force needed to cover it, you're measuring how much work was done. Since machines were invented to do work for us, it's not only important to know how much work we want them to do, but also be able to measure exactly the amount of work they're capable of doing. That's a wrap. Clean it up. <laughs>